Well, hello everybody and welcome to Flight Simulation Association's Fly July live stream interview with Orbix and X-Plane. My name is Evan. I'm the co-founder of Flight Simulation Association. We are super happy to be here supporting Fly July 2022, the annual celebration of all things flight simulation. And we're Flight Simulation Association. We're hosting today's live stream. We are the folks who run Flight Sim Expo every year. You can find out more about us at Flight Sim Association. Dot com. But you're here to hear from, of course, Austin, the creator of X-Plane, as well as Anna and Santi from Orbix. And we're here talking about X-Plane 12, of course, one of the most highly anticipated releases of the year. We're talking about Orbix's plans for X-Plane 12, what they're going to be developing in terms of content. And we'll have some previews, some screenshots, some videos, as well as lots of chances to win so let me jump right into that now is your opportunity if you haven't already to enter our live stream raffle we've got a whole pile of prizes available to be won today including including copies of x-plane 12 including two thrustmaster tca airbus officer packs and a whole lot more products from orbix products from aerobask so go ahead and enter that contest you don't have to be a flight sim association member anyone can enter the url is flight sim association association.com slash contest. You'll see that URL up on the screen again. You put in your information and then as you can see on the screen here, once you've entered, you can actually do a few other things, get some bonus entries and increase your chances to win. Now how today's going to work is we're starting with about 45 minutes of questions with the panel. You'll see them come on here in just a moment. After that, I'll come back. I'm going to announce the first set of winners. There'll be seven winners that I announce. Then we'll go back to the panel to take live questions from you, from the audience. And then at the end, I'll come back for a second time and I'll announce that second set of winners. Now, if you want to ask questions, we're taking questions from Flight Sim Association members. So you can submit those questions through our website if you're a member. And if you're not a member, wherever you're watching, if you're watching on the X-Plane YouTube channel, on FS Fleet, or many of the other places, if you're listening on Skype, Skyblue Radio. You can also put your questions in the chat, and I'm relying on those moderators to send those questions my way. So moderators, when you're seeing a great question that you think should be part of the stream, send that my way. We'll get that included and answered in our second half today. And like I said, we're grateful to our many stream partners for helping us spread the word. You might be watching on FS Elite, with Blue Games, with Orbix, with X-Plane, on the Moose Crew, Mustafa's channel on Twitch, FS News, the Pilot Club, Listening Live on Sky Blue Radio and maybe watching with Sky Command as well. So big thank you to all of those moderators for helping us put on such a great show today. Now, like I said, today's presentation is hosted by us at FSA, but it's moderated by a new friend of mine that I met out in San Diego back in Flight Sim Expo 2021. His name is Brian. He goes by Sky. He runs the Sky Command channel on Twitch. And this is the kind of thing he does for a living. He runs Plus Up, which is an experiential marketing company. He's volunteered to help us out at Flight Sim Expo in Houston, which is phenomenal. And he's here today to lead us through a phenomenal conversation. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand things over to Sky and we will get started with the Flight Sim Association Fly July live stream interview with X-Plane and Orbix. Over to you, Sky. Together, such an amazing webinar. Hello, everybody. My name is Sky Command, aka Sky C, aka Sky, and it is a pleasure to be your moderator for this panel. Now, I've been a flight simmer since 2006, and I was absolutely determined to make it for Janet Airlines in her life. And since then, my love of flight sim and being a part of the community has only gotten higher. H higher because of flight. Anywho, today's topic we're all eager to hear about, and I'm sure no doubt will be another step towards the golden age of flight simulation. But before that, let me introduce the panelists who hardly need any intros. And of course, first, we have Austin, leader of x -Plane. How are you doing, Austin? Doing well. And also, well, we also have Anna, CEO of Orbix. Hello, Anna, how are you doing? Hey guys, doing good here. Amazing, and lastly, and of course, not leastly, we have Santi, who's a community manager at Orbix and also a scenery developer for X-Plane 12. How are you doing, Santi? Doing great. Awesome, now thank all three of you for being here. I really appreciate you for taking the time and let's just get started, right? Let's get right into it. We're here to talk about X-Plane 12 and Orbix working together but we'd be doing a disservice to our audience if we didn't acknowledge the energy that Microsoft Flight Sim has brought to our community. 
Now the question, and I'm going to start it to Anna really quick. What has that energy meant for you in your teams? Uh, well, we obviously we we've, we've been in flight simulation for uh, a very long time since 2006, and so um, we always love to see um, the creators and what they come up with, and and um, so we very much welcome uh, the entry of you know new players, new creators um, in the scenery space, in the development space, um, because it just makes this um, place so much better and the world yeah. so much bigger. I love that. Now, Austin, same question. MFSS has brought a lot of energy. What does that energy mean to you and for X-Plane? Gosh, well, I don't know. So there's been an interesting thing going on. Like for the last, what, 25 years, myself and Microsoft have been kind of playing a little game of leapfrog. And it's yeah. like every two years, one of us leapfrogs over the other. And uh, for the first time in history with Microsoft Flight Sim, the new one, I don't feel like we're leapfrogging one over the other. I feel like we're taking two actually different directions hmm. where Microsoft is just like hitting it out of the park with the scenery as viewed from certain altitudes, okay, from certain mm -hmm. altitudes, certain lighting, certain conditions, their scenery is just absolutely just the best we've ever seen. And X-Plane, I'm taking it in a somewhat different direction with X-Plane 12, especially I mean, the flight model, I, I can say, is professional grade. I mean, we're using it to flight test eVTOLs. I mean, I can tell you about the use cases of the X-Plane flight model. But for once, I feel like it's not a leapfrog. It's a diversion. And the customers now are able to say, well, what do I? What am I looking for in a sim? Do I want the ultimate flight model? Do I want the ultimate scenery? What am I looking for in a sim? And there's no right answer or wrong answer. But awesome. That's a very transparent answer, actually. But tell me, tell me a little bit about your 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 different direction, right? Can you can you elaborate a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So, um, what was it? So, X Plane uses obviously blade element theory. People have heard me talk about it a hundred times, where the airplane mm -hmm. is mathematically broken down into a bunch of little pieces, and we find the force on each little piece. Here, I'll do. A, I can do a little quick uh, screen share right now. So, here we are uh, in a Cirrus, and then I can. Uh, turn on, you know, the forces, I can see the forces acting on the airplane, and maybe it's too low res to come through. Evan, are you able to actually capture the forces here, or is that not going to come through on uh, on this? On oh, we can see it. It's definitely can see Great. it. And then, and we've taken this up to new levels, like finding the angle of attack in each piece, and the airflow, and uh, even the streamlines acting over the aircraft. And so X-Plane has had this uh, blade element theory wow. for, uh, you know, right since the beginning, for 20, 25 years or so. But it was about maybe, I think about three years ago, that someone named Kyle Clark came to me at a company called Beta. He said, hey, also, we're building an electric vertical takeoff and landing airplane. You, you want to help simulate that? I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure. And, um, and so I got into that company and started simulating an electric VTOL. And what's so fascinating is, uh, well, I've got a model of it somewhere over here. This is Thompson Meeks, by the way. He's my right hand man uh, in uh, tech support and marketing and stuff like that. He's my he's my fixer. The mob term is he's my fixer. If there's anything I don't know in the middle of this interview, I'll turn to him. Hello, say, fixer. What did we decide about that again? So he, his memory is better than mine. So anyway, so this is an EV tall uh, electric uh -huh. vertical take landing airplane. This is what uh, Beta is building. And what's so fascinating about this thing is it's got wings, obviously, uh, that, that lift. It's got rotors up here like a drone that, get, that helps it hover. It's got a propeller back here to push. And to get going, it's running all of them at the same time. And so the name of the game when I got into beta was make uh, X-Plane simulate that aircraft. Well, here's what's so fascinating about that. We got the wings. We got the rotors. We got hmm. the prop. We got the interaction of all of them. We got the booms. They did versions of skids. They did versions with landing gear. And so all of these different aerodynamics are all going at the same time. They're all interacting and so it's actually the most complex mathematical simulation you're going to find. This may might think, oh, a jet, that's, you know, the most complex. No, not necessarily. Jets don't even have prop wash to speak of. We're one so so Austin, how does that matriculate to the direction that you're heading at that's different from, from Microsoft Flight Sim? I mean, we're, we're modeling some of those same aerodynamics in, right. that, in that platform as well, right? Sure, so of ta course. talk to me a little bit of some of the differentiators. Yeah, so exactly. So when x uses blade element theory, it has to have an accuracy that is absolutely professional grade because mm -hmm. their test pilots started actually using the simulator to prepare for their real flights. 
and we started trying out all the different possible variations of this aircraft. We tried uh, many, okay. many, many variations of this aircraft in X-Plane to see what to build for real. And so the next thing you knew, we were building the simulator to try out what we would build for real, train the test pilots before they'd fly the real airplane. And because Beta was building prototypes so fast and is to this day, if I was ever wrong, it was quickly found out when we deployed the real aircraft, if the real aircraft didn't match the sim. And so I was forced by my need to support the company, support the mission and do a job that would never come back to bite us later. To right. Absolute 100% top notch, mathematically prov provable on the stand, provable in a deposition level of support and delivery of the math. And while I'm doing this with Microsoft Flight Sim, they won't even let you use their sim for training. They don't even want to use it for training. And I'm, I'm here at the test pilot level for the most aer aerodynamically and mathematically complex airplane you're going to find. So it's a radically different direction. Now, gotcha. to my horn on flight model all day long, well, Microsoft can turn around to their horn on their incredible 3D scenery that I don't have. Well, allow me to paraphrase. You're, you're sort of talking a little bit of collaboration, though, right, Austin? You're talking about there's an open collaboration. You're working directly with those manufacturers. Here's where I sort of want to tie Orbix in. Talk about a little bit, and this is to you, Anna. Talk about a little bit of the work and the collaboration that Orbix has with X-Plane 12 and, and you guys working together. Um, well, we have been developing Scenery for X-Plane, you know, for a long time. And mm. so we will definitely continue to do that. <clears throat> and we're putting the content across. And, and to do that, we will need some help. Um, mm -hmm. So we are our developers, and Sante being one, we've got access to the beta and looking at our products and how they move across. And Austin says that, you know, everything is going to have backward compatibility, which is really good. Uh, but definitely some of these um, footage that I see on the screen is amazing. And so we still have a scratch the surface of this and we don't know what we're going, we're going to do next with it really. Uh, but uh, certainly it looks fantastic from here. So I'm going to put Santi on the spot because you, you kind of dropped the hint that he's been developing for, for X-Plane as well. Can you, can you sort of point to some of the differentiators and how Orbix is playing a role there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's, um, well, like Anna was saying, that uh, we're actively using, you know, the beta and testing out our previous X-Plane products and bringing them over to the new sim. So um, there's a lot of fantastic new uh, features in X-Plane 12 that, you know, really bring the scenery. It makes it come alive, basically. Um, to to me, from the first glance, it, you know, just the, it, it's just way more crisp uh, yeah. visually, especially with all the uh, the new features of, uh, of X-Plane 12. So um, I won't spill too much, but it, basically uh, we're having a lot of fun seeing the seeing it on the new platform. Well, I agree with you. And definitely, guys, we have a lot more to share, but we're going to keep it, Austin, right back in the hot seat there. You, we we're talking more about this direction. It seems to me, right, that we are continuing to make sure that we're catering to veterans and people who are really enthusiastic about flight sim, right? Can I turn a quick page and see if there's anything new or exciting that will bring some of the newer generation flight simmers on board before we acknowledge what we have for the veterans? Sure. So um, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that on its head just a tiny little bit. By oh, please do. Please do. What type of new airplanes are we bringing in? Oh, and now you're talking. How is that going to bring in the next generation of aviation? Mm -hmm. So. I was building, all right, so let me go to both extremes here, because th this whole discussion is one of extremes, extremes of flight model and X-Plane and scenery and Microsoft, the extremes of the realism and X-Plane, also what we don't have, which is a Microsoft's, you know, global uh, radar map of the world. This whole discussion is one of extremes, and this is what X-Plane 12 development has been. But on one end of the extreme, we'll have something I say, the F-4 Phantom. This has always been like my fantasy plane, the ultimate yeah. badass, non-computer controlled, nothing but jet fuel and hydraulic fluid. It's like the Chuck Norris airplane. And um, I was emailing someone that was always uh, talking to me about little little ultralight type aircraft designs. And just in conversation, he happened to mention, oh yeah, and back when I was an instructor pilot for the F-4 Phantom in the Israeli Air Force, I learned the following thing. And I was like, whoa, stop, wait, what? 
guy <laughs> in Israeli Air Force instructor pilot F-4 Phantom, and that just led down 30 days of absolute mad cat development and experimentation and beta testing as he just gave me every single thing he knew about the F-4. I put it all into the sim, delivered the aircraft to him, and by the time we were done, that F-4 is ready to train Phantom pilots. Unfortunately, 20 years too late. We're not training <laughs> pilots anymore. But... For the old school veterans, if that's what you want to talk about, the old school of aviation, the F-4 Phantom, the supersonic dynamics, the delta yep. wing dynamics, the non-fly-by-wire, the blown flaps, the drooped, uh, the, the, the delta wing and the wash. They're actually, the jet wash actually does affect the horizontal stabilizer a bit, as we've learned. All these old school aerodynamics mm -hmm. for the, 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 the gas burning F-4 Phantom are in there to perfection. But there's a new type of aviation that's coming along that I also want to support. And that's the electric, the absolute opposite of the F-4 Phantom. Uh, the I see off and landing no fuel maybe 120 130 miles an hour flight civilian use only no weapons it seems to be the opposite of the f4 phantom and when a lot of people hear you know electric aviation that'll never work it doesn't go as far it doesn't go that fast it's not very much payload range what's the point well the point is an electric airplane requiring vertical takeoff and landing needing no fuel and no runway can go wherever the heck you want so to go Austin, let's keep going down that path. What what about the the new form of type of aircraft will will latch on? Will the new flight simmers latch on to? Well, so here's the interesting thing. And and again, you'll notice all of my all the answers to your questions, they keep hitting reality, not yeah. so much marketing or users. They hit some mm -hmm. element of the reality of aviation. So right now there's a bit of a pilot shortage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody's flying again. I've heard of like uh an airline in the Mid East literally having to ground Airbus A380s for lack of flight. Yeah. Okay, billion dollar assets sidelined for lack of a flight crew. All right, we're in a pilot shortage. Right now, one pilot might fly 50 people, right? Two mm -hmm. pilots, 100 people in the airplane. This is, you know, parent teacher ratio or your student faculty ratio of 50 to one, right? One pilot, 50 passengers. Well, these eVTOLs might be one pilot, three passengers. <laughs> you mm, see? Okay, and I see. So in other words, whatever pilot shortage we have now is going to look like nothing compared to the pilot shortage we're about to have because we're about to have a new type of airplane that actually takes you where you want to go, lands in the middle of the city, lands in a, in a skyscraper right by Central Park, hops over the traffic of Los Angeles and puts you at a convention center in the middle of LA. I see. It's so does that, type. Austin, does that mean that you're, that X-Plane 12 is while modeling these new, these new types of aircraft, that's going to help bring in our, our next generation and address a pilot shortage potentially, right? Yes, Based on the real world exactly. We are going to have a pilot shortage, the likes of which you've never seen, because there will be so many of these electric airplanes and there will be so few passengers on board each one per pilot. The pilot to passenger ratio is about to go up by a factor of 10. We're going to need more pilots. They can get started with X-Plane now. The kids that are flying electric wow. airplanes now are going to develop these skills that people will be desperate for in about 10 years or so when these airplanes get certified and moved into deployment. So you I ask, love that. How do you support the, the, the veterans? How do you support the newcomers? I don't think of veterans and newcomers in the marketplace. I don't mm -hmm. think of veterans and newcomers as customers. I think of the simulator as supporting veteran flights, such as the F-4 Phantom. Austin, I'm, flights, I'm glad that you touched on that. The, the, you know, thinking about the old, the veterans versus some of the newcomers. I kind of want to take that same energy and ask you, Anna, if the, in your opinion, is there a difference between X-Plane 12 and maybe uh, Microsoft Flight Simmer? Conversely, is there a difference between sort of veterans and some of the new simmers have you seen? Um, look, I, I think that, I mean, it, it's just a personal choice, really, what people use the simulator for. Um, mm -hmm. I think that what definitely we have seen in terms of the scenery is um, there is different kinds of, you know, people that buy our stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there are people that are after that extreme realism. And I'm very interested to hear what Austin is saying there. Um, and, you know, training the next generation, because I, I do think that the future of, of aviation has got a lot to do with this, um, you know, personal, uh, personal vehicles and, uh, you know, flying taxis and liveries and that kind of stuff. So it probably is going to be a shortage of people that are pilots um, uh, when you're starting to deploy this in market. So the people that actually, you know, buy our stuff are probably more of kind of, well, there's probably a few categories, but let's sort of divide them um, between people that are after the extreme realism. Uh, mm -hmm. And we are doing some work in Unreal Engine, for example, to sort of bring that, 
you know, realism uh, even even more um, on the on the screen and on the um, not so much on the simulators actually, but just kind of you know seeing the possibilities. So we're not just doing um, experiments on airports, but also other land. Um, assets. Um, so people that are really after that, and then there are some people that are explorers and they just want to go and see the world. And see. and those ones are, you know, um, the the great, um, they're great, you know, users of our of our scenery stuff because um, they go and see a city, for example, that they've never visited before. And so that that's more, especially during the lockdowns. And you know, Australia, we had lots of those. Mm -hmm. um, it was really good to see people going to explore places that they including myself, you know, that they've never seen, or, or maybe you just sort of go back to some place that you have seen and, um, and um, sort of just, you know, relive your holidays or your, or your trips and, and that has been really good. So I think uh, what I'm, I'm hoping that Explain 12 would bring um, is, you know, people that are interested, we are in the business of making real, realism, you know, making sort of realistic scenery and not fantasy ones. And so I'm really hoping that there will be uh, a whole bunch of uh, people that are going to come and, you know, want to see what the world looks like in super detail. See, I love that you mentioned uh, exploring the scenery, right? Exploring the scenery. I'm, I'm curious on to how does Orbix and Abora help people to continue to explore scenery. Like, for example, let me give you, uh, what if I wanted to make my own scenery or wanted to learn how to sort of, maybe I wanted to explore that way, right? And instead of just flying, maybe I wanted to help make it, maybe it's a, a neighborhood or a holiday that I remembered, right? That I wanted to sort of bring to life. What what sort of things are Orbix doing to position themselves that way? So, um, well, um, we are now setting up, a, which will be a few months away still, but we're setting up an academy um, and not to compete with the FSA, uh, that's association, <laughs> but I know you guys have got an academy as well, but um, that is going to be a hub for new people to come in and find content, uh, but also especially, um, you know, tap into the expertise of people that have been doing this stuff for uh, quite some time. And I think that is... Um, uh, it's a pretty, it's a bit of a mission for us. So we're we're definitely in the, you know, we definitely want to see more people coming into the space of making scenery and covering. The world is a big place and yes. it changes. It yes. changes all the time. It's not just like when you think you've covered it all, you've got to start all over again because things have changed, right? Right. Um, so the more people, the better. And what I would personally like to see is the quality to continue to improve and for people that are sort of, you know, doing their first piece of scenery um, and they're just sort of learning how to do it, uh, to actually understand what good quality is because that is just going to be good for everybody. It's going to be good for, for them. It's going to be good for people that, mm -hmm. you know, buy this scenery or even if it's a free, if it's a freebie and we definitely support freeware uh, ourselves, we kind of want to see that high quality you know, come into the market. So people get a lot more hooked. If you buy a piece of scenery and it's a bit crap, yeah, I don't yeah. know, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so if it's too quiet, you go, oh, well, I'm just going to go and get the next one now. So exactly. that's what we want, right? That is definitely what we want. Very interesting, Anna. You, 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 you know, you, you, you've correctly uh, uh, attached realism, right? And that turning into an experience. Austin, you also mentioned you're focusing, hyper-focusing on the realism, right? Can you talk about some of those features that will bring the realism in and that would at least uh, keep the veterans maintained and keep them sort of satiated with that realism? Can you talk about what you're doing there? Uh, yeah, sure. So there's a lot of ways I can go with the answer to that question. Bring it on, Austin. Tell okay. me all of them, please. Right. And so the, the first, obviously, I've already tackled was the flight model. Right. The flight model's got to be good enough to to test what an airplane will do and be right about it before anyone's flown it. So when you fly it, it does what the simulator said. And that that is the epitome of accuracy. And we are, we are settling out on that plateau. Another way is absolutely graphically. So Ben Sutnick, uh, who's uh, my right-hand man in the mm -hmm. coding area, it occurred to him one day, he got tired of the artist always being a little dissatisfied with the airplane look, the, the way the airplanes look. He's like, all right, we are going to get our rendering down to the point here that we are tracking the watts per meter coming from the sun. 
and wow. we're going to have the metal reflect and the plastic absorb and the tires and the rubber have a certain sheen that other materials don't and get all the, the lighting and the materials down to first principles physics. And what's so fascinating about this to me is we're at first principles flight modeling. Ben is making the first foray into first principles. Can you can you can you elaborate on that? I mean, like, call me the complete noob. What's first? What's first flight modeling? Please enlighten me right. and our audience. First principles means we're not just imitating what we want to imitate. We're not just hmm. doing whatever a focus group said. No, we're going down to the fundamental physical laws. Wow. So explain, and <laughs> this could turn into a two-hour presentation. I could break. <laughs> it we have time, but I'll give you a quick equation. Okay, I'll give you a quick equation. The lift on a bit of airplane wing is mm -hmm. equal to the coefficient of lift at CLS V squared rho over two. The coefficient of lift times the area times the velocity squared times the air density divided by two. That Did everyone a, in the audience catch that? Write, write it down, down. quiz down. at the end. That is a fundamental first principles or close to first principles law. It's a law that all airplanes follow. It's not based on a focus group. It's not based on PR. It's not based on marketing. It's based on physics. And mm. this is the absolute core tight little code loop of X-plane finding the force acting on each little bit of the aircraft. Then it builds up all the forces to get the total forces moments on the airplane and turns out to accelerations, velocities, and positions. And so you're moving across the sky, which is also known as flying. So um, first principles means you're following the physics and you don't really care whether you like the answer or not. The answer is you get the answer you get in reality. So x has been that for 20, 20 years, okay? Or 20 gotcha. years versus I wouldn't do it any other way. Right. Graphics, computer graphics have not historically been like that. Computer mm -hmm. graphics have always asked the question, what's the quickest, cheapest, easiest way I can get something that looks good enough to sell? All right. right. That's been right. the question of computer graphics. Ben Sopnik now, for the first time that I know of, has turned that question on his ear and said, I don't care what you want it to look like. How many watts of sunlight are striking a square meter of aluminum or carbon fiber on this airplane? And how much of that light is reflected back to the viewer? How much is absorbed? How much is scattered? And in what direction does the scatter come back at you? And this is first principles rendering. And gotcha. we are starting to get there. And this is my first little foray. You know what? You'll notice I said by saying, you know, oh, Microsoft's got the scenery. explain has got the flight model. Yep. Two true. different directions. Uh -huh. I'm starting to put a few arrows in the quiver of rendering here by going with first principles lighting. And it's only the beginning. We've got water. I think Evan was tossed up some seaplane footage there while I was ranting a second ago. We've got first principles interaction with the water. The floats on that airplane that you saw. Oh, yep. no. I didn't say, let's bounce the floats around in a way that people won't complain about. Oh, no. <laughs> Every boat was broken down into a mass that displaced water and had buoyancy, deflected water, and, and followed the conservation momentum to repel the float. And I'm pretty sure there was a brief little moment where you could see all the little forces on the float. There was the, the public diagnostic on that to prove what I'm talking about. And um, so we've got first principles on the water and the way they interact with the floats. So, so Austin, I'm curious about, though, the, the, well. tying this back to sort of uh, making this real for our veterans, you, are, are, is this the demand that you're seeing generated from yourself? And this is a sort of a self-reflective question. Is this, is, are you driving this demand? Or are you receiving this feedback from someone in the veteran pilots that they're looking to understand exactly how much wattage is coming from the sun? Which okay. way is this coming from? Yeah, so I don't know the answer to that question. Yes, we got him, everyone. All right, flip. I'm reason, curious. What's your I best take? Know. Well, laminar research has run a little bit like Game of Thrones, if you recall that. Uh, each person at laminar research, they're in their own little fiefdom. They've got their own little expert area. Gotcha. And yes, in theory, King Joffrey controls everyone, but really? You know, <laughs> and it's, it's kind of the same thing here. I'm sitting here in my office in South Carolina. I got my fixer to come by and back me up with any facts if necessary. But mm -hmm. Ben, he's, there is no office at laminar research. Uh, ben is in his house probably right now if he's not working this weekend, sitting there saying, well, I need to get the lighting just right. And really yeah. what he's working on right now is trying to dial in these DSF files a little better and get some cloud rendering bug fixes. And so Ben is like, I got to get the lighting in clouds. I'm like, I got to get the flight model to make sure we're all good for beta. And uh, a guy named uh, Jim Keir, he's doing the air traffic control. Every time I find someone wrong with air traffic control, I tell him. Uh, Jim Gregory, he just did the F-14, which I can show you, show you if I want. So all these different people have their own different areas gotcha. of expertise. They're all batting them in. And I'm making requests. Oh, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. This should be better. That should be better. And sometimes the answer is, and I don't have time, or that's not what people want, or no. And sometimes the answer is, all right, fine, I'll do it. And then I see it done in the next 30 days. So, you know, the whole thing, what makes a good flight sim 
That's a, a surprisingly kind of group-oriented, informal process we go through. And of course, we listen to customers. Of course we do. But when I am so excited about coming back to first principles and coming back to real aviation, uh -huh. notice the whole concept of a focus group doesn't exactly apply. My question is, what does the real airplane do? And that, that really is the final the That final comes from you. I see. Yeah. Now, let's, I'm wondering, Anna, and, and you know, to the team at Orbix, if, if there's a different perspective, you know, because you guys are squarely in tune with the community in terms of add-on and support and making sure things are adding to our simulation. So where do, where do you think the, where's the demand coming from? Are you guys perfectionists in your own right? Or are you hearing the community sort of adding to that demand to make it as real as possible or to make it as additive as possible? What do you think? Yeah, I'll, I think answer, yeah, probably um, I'll answer this a bit, but I think Santa should chip in. From my perspective, and I, I very much agree with what Austin is saying from a slightly different perspective, which is that if you, if you make a product that you like, the product is going to be good. Um, yeah. So I agree that mm -hmm. you sort of, you do listen to what people are saying and are asking you, but it, and it probably is not dissimilar to what you actually like, right? You yourself mm -hmm. like. And so in the organization, um, I've been trying very much to push this idea of owning a product. And so if you own the product, you actually make the a product that you like. So yeah. whether it's a city, if it's an airport, if it's an aircraft, whatever it is, you know, if you own it, you do it and you take all of the decisions and the creative decisions around this and it's just going to be good because you like it. So if you like it, it'd be a lot of people like you that you, mm -hmm. that you like it, even if, you know, you feel that you're a bit wacky at times, so maybe you sit on the fringe. You, there's going to be other people like you that like it. And so I think it's very much uh, for us also, while we do listen to our customers a lot in terms of, oh, I like to fly there and then there and this airport rather than that airport. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think that there is probably that first principle that applies to us as well, which is that we basically do stuff that we like. And when right. we pick a city, we pick it because we think it's cool um, <laughs> and not because someone has kind of told us to do that, right? Sorry, so Charlotte. I think so. we probably have got more of a finger on the pulse <laughs> in terms of the community. So I'll let you chip in that one. Yeah, to add on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Anna captured it pretty well. And uh, the, the way I look at it uh, from a development perspective, um, it, I treat it like any artist would. You know, uh, if if you're actively working on something that you're intrigued and and passionate about, uh, you're you're gonna see that in the in, in the quality and the outcome of yeah. of the product itself. Um, you know, if if you're getting told what to make, you know, you may not have that interest as much. You know, uh, and the outcome might be a little bit different. But if if you're passionate about what you're creating, um, you know, the results are going to show. Yeah. So all fairly focused on doing what you like, right? And re and adding <laughs> to what the community is. Hey, listen, that's an honest answer. I like it. So let's let's take a step, just a quick step back. And I'm going to toss it back to you, Austin. I'm curious. What feature of X-Plane 12 are you most excited about? Um. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I love the, the general idea of being able to count on the flight model tell me what an airplane is going to do but i'll, I'll tell you a, a, little, a little one that we haven't spoken about too much is the seaplane oh. dynamics i've actually got um some professional uh seaplane pilots that put out forest fires and stuff like that they land wow. on the lake in a challenge they scoop up water and they dump it on forest fires and mm -hmm. they're going to explain the train mm -hmm. their pilots and it's going to save them like oh i don't know two thousand dollars an hour or whatever it costs to operate these airplanes and um it has been so dang fun to fly these seaplanes because at the same time I had my water guy, I think Sydney just took over the water, getting all this hyper realistic water. At yeah. the same time, Ben Sutnick, my scenery guy, he got the water to come up and intersect the land. So you could literally float up and then, you know, like a boat dock and then your wheels would take over, see the land and roll up onto the land. And so we have the water dynamics, the land dynamics, the water rendering and the float plane accuracy. And the amount I've learned about seaplanes has been so fun. Uh, they, the, the guys that are uh, doing the, the training in X-Plane have said I should get an honorary uh, seaplane license. Just <laughs> for 
but um, I'm going to run up to Alaska and get the real license as soon as I get a second to breathe. Good but, luck. Um, what is so dang fun about this is there's completely different forces driving these floats at different speeds. Right now, in this little image that we've got showing up right here, the airplane was going slowly enough that it was mostly buoyancy. But as mm. you pick up speed, the drag increases because the front of the float kicks the water down, then the back sinks down, and now you're just what's called plowing. You pick up more speed and it starts to turn to momentum transfer. It's no longer a buoyancy wow. game. It's a momentum transfer game. If the water's kicked down, the airplane's kicked up. Then the water starts to feel hard. Now it's water skiing. Then you've got the back of the floats dragging. You actually push the nose forward to get the back of the floats out to reduce the friction. That's what lets you build up the next 15 or 20 knots. Then you raise the nose, but not enough to drag the back of your floats to get the thing up in the air and flying. That's what you do every time you take off in a seaplane. There's so much going on. All right, all it's right. I'm um, hold on, Austin. How much of this is going to be ready to go for us? It already has. I've been flying it. I'm flying. I can demo it right now if you want. Although you yeah. see the video, I I'll take your word for it. But you're telling me that this well, that this level of accuracy is ready to go, ready to go when the time comes for explain. It was using that video that I recorded this morning, so I, Evan would have it to to overlay the discussion. Yeah, that's all in there. All right, I'll prove it to you another way. So first of all, it's it's in the video. Second of all, Bridger Aerospace is using it, and Google Bridger Aerospace if you want. But then the third thing you can do is when you're flying X, then you can hit Shift M. Shift M. That does what's called a cycle dump. It basically mm -hmm. is a complete check of my work. It puts out a gigantic file that shows every how every single bit of force was derived on the aircraft for that exact moment in time. It's thousands and thousands of lines of dense text and math, but it's the proof of my work for that moment in time. Hit Shift M and look at it. Now, when I first released this, I had a certain question about releasing all my information. So proprietary information <laughs> sure. was being delivered to potential competitors. That was a drawback. I elected to do it anyway because first and foremost, the only way I can say I know my work is good is if I let any dang person check it that wants to. And so I was willing to take a certain competitive risk to make sure people could check my work if they wanted to. I love the pride, Austin. I love that. You're like, hey, check my work. That's how much I care about this. Okay. Yeah. You can I've got a command key for you to literally check my work. Yeah. It's now shifting. I'm not sure, and Anna and Orbix, if you guys are allowed to share, but is there a favorite of something that's coming up after X Plane 12 is releasing that you get? Is there something that you're most excited about? In for the um, in the X Plane our pipeline, you mean of the uh -huh. X Plane stuff? Yeah, correct. I think Santa can talk to that one. Oh, Santi! By the way, you look very <laughs> strong and handsome. If you want to, if you want to leak anything now, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna say. Brisbane International looks phenomenal in X Plane 12. Brisbane, you guys yeah. heard it here first. Brisbane's looking pretty good coming down the pipeline. It's, okay, it's looking really nice, especially what Austin was touching on earlier about how um, you know the effect of sunlight on different materials. Mm -hmm. It's just out of the box. It, you you can tell immediately the difference between the previous version and and the new sim. Wow, uh, now I'm. Actually, I'm yeah, ahead, sorry, yeah. sorry, uh, Brian. On um, on Brisbane, um, the uh, the CEO of the Brisbane Airport, uh, for some reason, kind of found out that we, um, you know, we have released it obviously already, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. we're sort of working on that, and they're they are pretty excited. They are actually using it for the other on internal purposes and training. Really, the teams at the moment. Yeah, they did like some kind of press release yesterday as well um, about this. So I think that it is so important, you know, I don't want to rehash that, but the, the realism is so important um, because it does become, you know, if you think about the digital twins and all of these sort of themes that are mm -hmm. coming, they're becoming a little bit more popular. Uh, there is definitely such a an interest in, you know, having this on your screen or uh, putting some hardware around it and actually being able to really experience a place. So this is not just flight simulation for you know entertainment if you want yeah. um but it is very much about the uh the the, the training and and even internal so stuff you, you know you never see like in the case of Brisbane airport but um very useful for them and for their for their pilots um and we did the same with Essendon fields right that Essendon fields is our uh, home airport we deployed it on three platforms because we really wanted to cover wow. um, everybody and what the airport um, authority there um, um, is doing, they basically want to market that airport to uh, uh, private jet um, because Tullamarine, which is the main Melbourne airport, is very short distance from there and it's got, you know, expensive landing fees and stuff and uh, it's, it's just harder, whereas 
They right. just want to you know, bring the corporate jets down. They've got the new Bombardier um, hangar is right in there. They just built a brand new. And so it's becoming more like a, you know, your kind of corporate jet um, sort of destination. But some pilots just don't even know it kind of really exists or they just don't know how to taxi around and don't know where right. to go. And so we did this sure. April specifically for that reason so they actually know exactly what it looks like so you're dropping software scenery that is so realistic that they're using it for their training purposes at the airport (laughs) they went to you guys and said you guys might be able to model our airports more than we can honestly that's that's very impressive that's a you know congratulations to you guys that's huge i love that i love that austin back to you really quick about explain okay what can we talk a little bit about the collaboration between you and 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 Orbix from your perspective, and uh, maybe about the working relationship and what we can sort of ex- expect out of the gate? Yeah, sure. So the whole concept of Xplane in the past has been that you can get, it used to be you get eight DVDs and the scenery had to fit on the DVD for the whole planet Earth. And mm-hmm. then we kind of moved past that and said, well, now we're going to go digital. But we still had about the same size constraints because some people, you know, they still would order it on DVD. And I want people to download the whole world. Remember, I'm in a slightly different situation than Orbix. Orbix is able to say, we want a perfectly accurate Brisbane. We want to have, you know, Miami or Florida so perfect it's real. That's not quite the angle I take. The angle mm. I take is you got to have the whole dang planet because I'm not <laughs> going to have a customer coming to me saying, but where's my airport? Right. And so X-Plane is a mile wide and an inch deep when it comes to the scenery, when it comes to scenery, not so much when it comes to the other stuff, but the scenery is a mile wide and an inch deep. That is the perfect entry for Orbix to say, now we're going to make scenery that's a foot wide and a mile deep to really get the detail for a given area. And without question, I'm always in contact with Ben to make sure that the ortho photo scenery works. And right now, just to show you how the sausage is made, um, <laughs> we're having a little problem. We're trying to get the water to interact with the ortho photo scenery at the beaches and the edges. Gotcha. So all this incredible ortho photo scenery that Orbix delivers, all the incredible water, which is absolutely physical, and you don't ship, you know, Orbix doesn't ship the water. You need that explained water. So it needs to interact with the scenery at the coastline. And gotcha. so that's the little, the little problem we're trying to untangle behind the scenes right now uh, to get that little juncture between the scenery and the water and we don't want the waves to like look stupid or something like that so as far as the collaboration between me and Orbix my scenery is enough for anyone to see what it's like to fly an airplane anywhere on earth Orbix is now perfectly positioned to come in and do the high res scenery for whatever areas of the planet they see fit and of course we, we, we keep the lines of communication open technically to speed that process along no question Beautiful. Anna, same question. Uh, say, can you talk about the relationship, the working, the fruitful relationship that is uh, between X-Plane and Orbix? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've been, like I said before, we have been developing scenery for these guys for a long time. So I think mm-hmm. um, for the moment, we're really looking at this beta and we're looking at the possibilities and um, uh, covering the whole planet in very high details has been Orbix's mission. In fact, yeah. that's why our, that's what our name is, right? It's mm-hmm. Orb, as in you know, right. sphere, uh, and X in you know X ten times the details, so X tiny details. That's really where the name comes from. So that's what we are about. Um, so we we continue to to look at that. Um, Santa, we're actually trying to create a bit of a you know a a growing pod of developers that are interested in making scenery. And our main, um, I guess, product line has for um, uh, for, Expl- for Explain, apart from the airport, and the regions have been a very, very important thing. I particularly like the regions mm-hmm. because I sort of like to kind of, you know, fly around and have a look <laughs> at, um, you know, different places and stuff. And yeah. some of them look, Fantastic. And that is certainly something that Orbix does that not very many people can do. We do have a geospatial, um, you know, section um, in the business. We source the best data. We have got algorithms to do the um, the blending and the coloring and, you know, what it looks like if you go and buy, you know, tiles and they're completely, um, you know, raw. So there is a lot of work and I mean a lot of work. Um, mm-hmm. So just mm-hmm. even to do like a small region, it would take us north of six to eight months to develop, so this is like long sort of development times. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to actually restarting that region 
area, you know, <clears throat> scenery on top of the airports and the other things that we do. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I think it'd be pretty interesting to see how explain renders all that, which Listen, by the I'm sound of it is pretty good. I'm going to I'm going to step aside as a moderator and just be back as a normal flight simmer. And I got to say how excited I am that Orbix and x -Plane continue to have such a close relationship because we're the ones who benefit the most. We the community. So that's all good things to hear. But we're going to we're going to keep it in your lane really quick. Uh, what can we expect out of the gate from Orbix once x -Plane 12 drops? Uh, well, I think we've got some products that are sort of being developed. I won't sort of say exactly. The reason why I want to kind of unbutton that is because when you go into testing, there's always something that like, yep. you don't like, or it's going wrong, and then you go, and then you made a promise, and you go, and I don't want to ship stuff if it's not good, right? Right, so right. So if something goes wrong because we, you know, the, the platform is in beta, we are we are more in beta than, you know, we're in Delta or you know, Tata or something, <laughs> you know, so we, we sort of have to learn it, and it's a little bit like we did with Microsoft, we had to learn that and right. we kind of learned it on our own skin sometimes. Um, and so you made mistakes. And so I don't kind of want to say, oh, we're going to ship that by this date because we, we just don't do that. So I think pretty much we sort of say we're going to have all of these, you know, products that we want to do and we published our roadmap um, a while ago and then we get there sooner or later we get there and some for sometimes we just don't get there because we actually find some fundamental problems that we right. can't over, overcome um so sorry i can't give you a super straight answer but that that's really what's happening in terms of it's fine guys i'll keep asking them maybe by the end of the show we might get something out of that <laughs> one. you know we might get a little teaser um all right you guys have survived my gauntlet i just want to take a quick step back and, and get more of the joy you know uh, it, it's clear that the community and i and everyone is very excited to see what xpen has to offer but Let's take a little bit deeper step into the people that are here in the panelists, right? If you don't mind me, uh, I'll start by saying I've always wanted to get my PPL, Austin. Um, and particularly, I've wanted to do it in the SR22. Now, all of my buddies have recommended that I don't learn in the SR22 due to the costs, right? But I'm not going to listen to them. Two questions for you. What do you think about the SR22 in terms of a learner aircraft? And do you have an aircraft of your own? Yeah, <laughs> wow, talk about great questions. Because here's why. So the Cirrus SR22 that Evans popped up on screen here, that's the first airplane I owned. First airplane I ever owned. Really? Twenty-two. It's a centennial edition, gotcha. 100 years anniversary of flight. It was the same color as the Wright Flyer, kind of a, a beige linen color. Mm -hmm. And um, I flew that thing for, oh, I don't know, 800 hours, 1,000 hours, one in wow. the country, the other, over and over and over. So um, it's a great, great, great uh, little airplane, 310 horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's SR-22. I think it's uh, 220 horsepower if you get the SR-20. It's a fine airplane to learn to fly in. Absolutely fine. Um, you know, consult your local airport for rates and compare that to your, your income from the, the YouTube streams and see <laughs> that's always the goal. But um, I'm not going to try to comment as to how much it costs for you. I can tell you it's my a little airplane and I love the airplane. So I'll get back um, to you on the math there, Austin. Okay, yeah, part of the game. Um, now, of course, you can always take a beat up old Cessna 150 and learn to fly in that. That's what I learned yeah. to fly in. And, uh, and then, you know, you can get a beat up old Cessna 172. You can still learn how to fly. You'll save yeah. a little bit of money. So, um, yeah, the Cirrus SR-22 is a fine airplane. Why, I'll go ahead and share my screen again here since you're asking about specific airplanes. All right, and so just uh, out of coincidence, I was in a Cirrus uh, SR-22 here at the moment. Um, you called. Oh, so an incredible thing. You had asked earlier about what do I like so much about X-Plane 12. Yeah. One of the things I love about X-Plane 12 is that it really has a three-dimensional cloud model that actually lets you start to get a sense of how tiny you are compared to nature when right. you're a small airplane trying to go somewhere. I mean, sitting here right now in this little Cirrus SR-22, if I have to go the way I'm pointed and the turbulence in these clouds is going to destroy an airplane, we have some kind of interesting questions here, I think. Austin, are we watching live X-Plane 12 yeah, footage right here? Just left. Can you yeah, rock well, your I'm wings left and right flying. for the audience? Yeah, rock it sure. left and right right now. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm just flying as I, as I talk. Yep. But uh, that's assuming Evan doesn't write right my feed. But um, yeah, so here we are flying uh, a Cirrus SR-22 and X-Plane 12. And now you would ask me uh, about, oh, so anyway, you can really get a sense of the strategic game that you have to play in a light airplane to get through weather. And I can zoom out here. And uh, oh you start, my goodness, wow, you know, the world is not oh. that small. And with these clouds going up to 40,000 feet, 
and this little airplane going up to maybe 12,000 feet, wow. you've got some questions to ask about what exactly you're going to get away with and survive the flight. So <laughs> that's a real, a real fascinating thing in X-Plane 12 that I love. Um, wow. The next thing you would ask me is- uh, Do you own an air? Do you own an airplane? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is this is my airplane, uh, a Lancer Evolution. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually, I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment. Now I'm going to share the screen. I'm just going to share the entire screen. Let's see if it will let me do that. Can I share the entire? Okay, now we're going to get into the little more pattern. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so now you're seeing my entire desktop, which some people might say is dangerous, but. Nope, okay, you're so all good. This is, this is my actual airplane. There I up in Burlington, Vermont. I think we have a better picture of it. Oh, here we go. So this is my actual airplane. I'm sorry, do you see it? We're gonna we're gonna get the screen share back on in just a moment. We need for you to share your screen again, Austin. Oh, okay, hang on. Guys, we're doing it live, as you couldn't if you couldn't tell. Yeah, we're doing tell, it live. We're doing it live. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, play the play the video because uh let's try this again. Share the screen, entire screen, and select it and hit share. Do you guys see my screen now? I'm sure you do, right? You see my screen now, right? We do not, but it's okay. We've got footage okay. if you want to talk through in the background of the plane that you got. Okay. Uh, now do you see my screen? Still no, Austin, but oh, you can talk through. We're rolling footage. That way. Okay, then we're clear. <laughs> we're, we're not going to do it this way then. Uh, so my apologies. What we'll do is, um, let's see, can I share? Okay, you see it now? Nope. <laughs> oh my God. It's okay, Austin. Talk, talk through, talk through. Right, what we're well, we're going to have to do this verbally because yep. clearly uh, my Mac is denying permission or something like that. Yeah. So my current, my current airplane is a Lancer Revolution. You can Google it. It's 844X, November 844X ray. Uh, okay. So yeah, we have, Evan is putting some uh, footage of the evolution. Wait, can it really maneuver like that? Uh, it probably could, but I never have. I've got no, I was going to say, this is your this is your one to one yoke, right? This is just replaying something you've done in the air. Yeah, this is ever replaying a flight that I flew earlier this morning. So, <laughs> so I'm a married man, and nothing causes you to fly more safe than having a wife and a and a ten year old daughter. Trust me. So Fair. this is the simulator flying here, okay? Yep. But um, yeah. So that is that is my airplane, though. It's perfectly accurately modeled down to the color of the pens that I have velcroed into the cockpit to take down clearances. Guy named uh, Rodrigo Fernandez uh, came up from South America and spent the day photographing every little bit of the airplane to get it modeled perfectly. Goodness. And it is modeled perfectly. And I've got the engine, which is a PT6, Pratt Wendy PT6 turbine model perfectly. I mean, it's it is an exact, exact replica of the airplane. And when I fly the uh, the Lancer Evolution in X Plane 12, this is exactly the same as flying the real airplane. Now, let me just give a quick a little tip here. If when sure. they told me to try and fly this airplane, take off at half power. Okay, take <laughs> off at half power. The thing weighs less than the Toyota Prius, but has 850 horsepower. Okay, and it'll surge over a thousand horsepower. If you go to full power to stand still, these spirals <laughs> slipstream from the prop will hit the stabilizer, spin the airplane like a top, and run it right off the left side of the runway. And when this happens to people, oh, there's a bug. The airplane pulls left. Yeah, the real airplane pulls left because of that spiral slipstream. <laughs> And so this airplane, like a P-51 Mustang from World War II, takes off at half power because the limiting factor on takeoff is that spiraling slipstream coming back, hitting the stabilizer and wanting to weather being the airplane off the left. Once you're in the air at half power, you've got the gear up, you've got the flaps up, and you've built up 120 knots, then you can feed in more power if you want to because you've got the airflow over the airplane to absorb the engine torque. The it's annotation cool. from the pilot manual heard from it's Austin like, Live. Remember everyone. what I just said about a million less people go on the internet and say X plane's broken because the Lancer Evolution pulls to the left. Right. <laughs> the real airplane make does. sure make sure you put it in the notes, okay, when they release yeah. it, okay, or give I a am. tip or something, you know, I'm when have they a first jump in. Thing appear up on the screen saying take off at half power. God, if I had a dime for every person left a one-star review online because the airplane pulls <laughs> to the left, that means X-Plane is broken. But um, All right, well, speaking – hold on, Austin. But speaking sure. of advice, though, I'm going to toss it quickly to Anna and Santi here. What advice do you have for to, to simmers coming over to X-Plane or coming into the sim or, you know, experiencing some of your products even for the first time? What general advice would you have for newcomers? Or not even newcomers, um, just simmers in general. Just simmers in general. Um, I think uh, it's a bit like take your time. Like it's, you know, fly simming is not something that you do just like that. Like, you you know, pick up, uh, you know, candy crush soda, for example. Mm. Um, you know, <laughs> it's not something that you do. Um, <laughs> I can't believe you said it. <laughs> that was just an in-joke. It was just an in-joke. It was an inside joke. Inside joke. Um, uh, so you just, you just have to take your time, right? You just have to... Um, you know, pick an aircraft you like, and maybe you find that you don't like it very much. Maybe try another one, um, and then 
you know, just kind of learn it and be slow at it and uh, don't, you know, I think uh, if you become impatient, uh, you're probably not, never going to get there. Mm. Um, but it's it's not a game. It's not a game. Sorry. It's not, a, it's not something you do. It's not a, you know, an activity, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little bit like if you want to learn how to pilot in real life, you can't mm-hmm. just do it in five minutes, right? And right. It's a, bit, it's a bit the same. So just kind of take it slowly and enjoy it. Beautiful and well said. All right, everyone, that is the end of the part one of questions. We're going to take a quick five minute break during which Evan is going to announce the first set of winners of the live stream raffle. Evan, take it away. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that, Brian. And indeed, we will be back to the panel in about five minutes. So stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Maybe grab a quick drink, take a break. That's what the folks who are in the panel will probably be doing in the next five minutes. And I'm back with you to do our first of two giveaways. So we have seven winners that I am about to announce for all kinds of prizes, including an Aerobasque Lancair Legacy, including one of our two Thrustmaster Yoke Packs, and more. So let's just jump into that. Uh, we're going to get Austin looking at that screenshot. I can see them working on that in the background. And lots of great questions coming through as well. So thank you to everyone for all the great questions. Um, really interesting first half, actually. I didn't even know that was the what Orbix stood for, that the idea of the globe in 10 times. That was totally new for me and i watching along the x-plane youtube chat as well big Macus on the x-plane youtube says he's willing to give someone 59.99 if they'll tell him when x-plane 12 comes out get it yeah yeah okay all right let's do some winners and now if we announce that you're a winner so this is important if i say or mispronounce your name as a winner you need to send me an email info at flightsimassociation.com within 24 hours to claim that prize. If you don't claim your prize, it's going to be given away to FSA members. And by the way, I'm seeing all you people joining in the Discord. Thank you for that. I'm going to say hi to you afterwards. But you guys should pay attention to Discord in about 36 hours because any unclaimed prizes are coming to you. So here's how it works. I say your name. You send me an email in 24 hours. I'll send you back an email within 24 hours with the details. So let's jump in. Here we go. The Aerobasque Lancair Legacy RG. I'm giving away two of these. First winner is Sebastian with two A's. Congratulations to you, Sebastian. Send me an email. And the second one is Medway. Medway is the second winner. So if I've just said either of your names, handles, send me an email at info at flightsimassociation.com and claim your prize. Up next is stuff from us. You know, generally the, the developers in our community are so, so generous, but of course we're going to help out too. So if I go and ask a bunch of developers for stuff, we also want to share. So we are giving away an annual captain membership that includes now a free hour session with a flight sim coach and a flight instructor. It includes three free Orbix products and it includes discounts and perks at our show flights and Expo in Houston. So all that stuff comes to you. Plus you get a bit of our merch so you can get one of our t-shirts hats or if you've ever wanted a flight sim shirt you can actually design your own and we'll print it and we'll send it to you if your name is kevin cardenti so kevin congratulations send me an email claim that prize and we'll talk to you via email Coming up next, Orbix has generated, or I should say donated, three prize packs. These are good for your choice of X-Plane Airport from Orbix, plus a six-month Volanta subscription. So, winners for Orbix products. Number one is Hindsight, which, by the way, that is an awesome name, because I know your last name, and that's a great pun, so well done on that. Next one is Jangle. And our third winner for the Orbix prize pack is Rox. So congratulations, Hindsight, Jangle, and Rox. Well done, the three of you. Make sure that you send me an email because we'll need you to claim that prize within 24 hours. And now, coming up, the first of two giveaways of the Thrustmaster TCA Officer Pack Airbus Edition, a great addition uh, to your flight simulation setup for maybe that new A330 that's coming out in X-Plane 12 or any of the other Airbus flight simming that you may have to do. So this is number one of two and our winner, Big Man Wes. So congratulations, Big Man Wes. You've won a Thrustmaster TCA Officer Pack Airbus Edition. Send me an email, info at flightsimassociation.com. Claim your prize and we will get that sent over to you. 
I am just having a look. It looks like they got the screen share working, so that's good news. And we've got a whole bunch of questions that folks have submitted on the FSA website. I'm seeing a few more coming through in Discord as I've been chatting. So we're going to have an excellent second half as we answer questions. I've got a few more preview videos from X-Plane, and I can see Austin is sharing his screen as well. Now, just before we go back to the panel here in about a minute, you can still keep on entering the contest. You can't enter more than once, but what you can do to increase your chances to win, go back to flightsimassociation.com slash contest and any of those extra activities like joining the mailing list or following us on Facebook, jumping in our Discord, becoming a member, if you already are a member, you can increase your chances to win at flightsimassociation.com slash contest. So that is what we've got coming up. One more draw and about a half hour from now, I'll be back with you to announce a few more winners, including winners of X-Plane, including winners of that Thrustmaster TC Airbus Officer Pack, the second version. But now I'm going to hand things back over to the panel. We'll see if everyone is ready. Brian, are we in good shape over there? They are saying they're in good shape. All right, perfect. I see the screen share. I see everything. So we are good to go. Sky, I sent things back over to you for the second half and live questions from the audience coming up. Thank you so much, Evan. Wow. I mean, if you're looking for employment as a hype man, please just let's 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 talk offline, okay? Uh, everybody, we are back. And as was mentioned, it is time from here, all of you in the audience. If anyone in the Butter Club has any questions, shout out to the Butter Club. Butter Club! Make sure you guys drop them in chat. All of the questions and this part of the panel will come directly from you guys. But warning, I may ask the question to whoever I choose to best answer it. So the first question is from an incredibly looking streamer named Sky Command. Oh, that, I, I guess that's me. Uh, the first question goes to Anna. Uh, did you play any sports ever? And does that play a factor to how you lead Orbix? Do I play any sports? Yeah, I, I have had, I guess, three major, no, major changes, I think, um, in my sporting career. I started with athletics uh, many years ago switch to rowing and I'm cycling now. Now, so the rowing one is probably the one that's sort of freshest, which I mm. still do quite a bit, where you've got, you know, if you're rowing an eight, you've got um, nine people in the boat. They don't look at each other because you're all, you know, looking at each other's backs. And you've got to do the same thing at the same time without talking and only the cock stalks. And I think Austin has got something to say about that too. But that is certainly something which you try to replicate in teams where you, um, you know, you really try to, every person's got a job, every seat has some, like a specific mm -hmm. um, role in the boat and you have to coordinate without talking to each other. And when, it, when, it, when you get the stroke, you know, when you synchronize mm -hmm. it, when you have, you know, you get a set of them, it's the best feeling in the world. And I think that just, I think, it's probably the best team sport ever, even if it doesn't look like wow. it. Like, you know, it's not considered a team sport, but I think it actually it is. It's the best team sport. I have I no know, experience with. Also, did some. You did some coxing yourself. Is that right? You wanna... <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I was the only person uh, that was uh, skinny enough to, to to drive the boat as a coxswain and tall and lanky enough to row stroke. So mm -hmm. yeah, I I spent some uh, I spent some time rowing, uh, both both rowing and telling other people to row faster. And uh, the tradition <laughs> at school was whenever you'd win, the coxswain would get thrown in the water. So I've been uh, dunked in the lake uh, my share of times, that's for sure. So, but I guess <laughs> flying is flying is my my preliminary sport these days if it counts as a sport. Does it? Can we call pilots athletes? Let's start the trend right now. Pilots are now professional athletes. Okay, we need max contracts. <laughs> well, I think I mean I think they are right. Even if you you know, um, no different from drivers. From you're not drivers. wrong. We do have to pass a physical, right? You got to be mentally mm -hmm. fit and yeah, able. Yeah, and you've got to mm -hmm. have yeah, you've got to keep your shit together. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you got, you're not wrong. I kind of like it. You heard it here and first, guys. When your heart rate is up here, you've got to stay calm. You've got to breathe it right down. You know, you sort of have to really calm Amazing. yourself. Yeah. I All think right. Sante might have some sporting. Oh, do you, um, Sante? Do you play sports? I bet you you played for the NBA. You played for the NBA. Admit it. It's okay. You did. Oh, uh, no. No, being a Canadian, I'm also a rower, but uh, in a canoe instead. Am I the only one that has no aquatic experience? You guys all have, <laughs> <laughs> seriously? One of the Yeah, odds. so the only relation to rowing I have is canoeing, um, maybe kayaking in the wilderness. Uh, 
other sport, uh, hockey. Did a lot of hockey, so. Amazing. I That's all entirely too cold and too wet for my liking, full disclosure. Uh, okay, time for some of the questions that you guys have posed into the audience. And this one comes from FSA First Officer uh, Spy, Luca, FSA Captain Will, and many others on the X-Plane YouTube channel. When is X-Plane 12 coming out? Who's that question for? <laughs> it's actually DeSanti, whenever you're, whenever you're ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, please. Okay, so I don't know. Let me start by saying I don't know. All right, so here's the problem. And this, I, I'm absolutely, I'm always a guy that says exactly how the sausage is made, no matter how much trouble I get in later. I wanted X-Men 12 to be out a year ago, okay? But the problem yeah. is, this is this is what's gone into X-Men 12. I'll give you, like, for an example. When we made the flight model physics for the floats, it was fine, but the water waves were following the thing from the artist the physics waves were following me. They weren't the same thing. And so it didn't work right until the artist and the physics guy got together to gotcha. make sure the physics waves, the rendered waves are the same thing. So the flight model would interact with it perfectly. So it was making one thing better, the rendering of the waves, the flight model of the waves caused us to have to do the next thing to get them to, to come together properly. Otherwise we weren't done. We would do the lighting and then the lighting would be great but then that would show up every little flaw in the art assets. And then my artists, you know, they turn in these incredible trucks, you know, the ground trucks that push the airplanes around in. But when they look realistic, it becomes all the much more obvious if they're not moving quite right. So everything we've fixed or improved mm -hmm. has just caused the next problem to bubble up to the surface and show up. And what's happening is we're in the middle of Uncanny uh, Valley. You know what Uncanny Valley Oh, yeah, I'm very familiar. We, we're, so for those that don't know, if you're watching The Simpsons, it's super easy to watch. You know it's a fake. If you're <laughs> watching Billions or Game of Thrones, it's super easy to watch. You know it's real. The problem is in the middle. When you've got computer animation that's like better than a cartoon but not as good as reality, you can tell something isn't quite right and it's very uncomfortable to watch. In x -Plane, we're starting to come out the far side of Uncanny Valley. We're starting to look real. But the problem is if anything isn't done then the entire illusion is broken so you're basically walter white and breaking bad right he tried to fix the fa or no it was a, a different show but he fi the, the faucet was broken so he fixed the faucet but then the door the, the garage also, door was broken right. so he had to fix that well, what does that show? Well, Malcolm in the Middle. Walter White. It's the same with Walter White. It starts as a simple drug deal, but everything yep. cascades the next deal <laughs> until he has to control the entire drug trade of Albuquerque and until he's done the whole thing. Perfectionist out of all done. of you guys. It'll yeah, never it's, come out. It's so, absolutely all right. Is, are we a year? Are we five years? Are we no, 10 no, years? No, 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 no. We're coming out this year. I want to be in beta this summer. I oh, want to you heard it. Hold it to them, audience. Hold, hold them accountable to it. Well, let's let's keep to, the questions going in the we've meantime. Done 31 though. private alphas so far. Thompson, all right, now let me bring my fixer in here. Thompson, how many alpha testers do we have? Like 250. 250. So we have 250 okay. alpha testers. They've gotten uh, 32 alphas so far. Yeah. So we are, I mean, the meth is coming out and it's starting to come out blue. We're starting to get our blue meth here. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, nice reference. The problem is we can't deliver this until all the meth is just the right shade of blue or people are going to complain that we're not actually as good as Walter White. Okay. So we have to finish the job and everything we do simply shows the next thing that's not good enough. It's so, like on this train. It's straight out of Breaking Bad. It's this train wreck where each thing causes up to half, causes us to half. I to love the references. The issue until we have it all controlled. Okay, so and Austin, you're, you're talking about future work or perfectioning the work that's happening, right? The current stuff, right? Making yep. sure that the current gen is as good as it making. But here's the next question that the the same guys have asked. Let's talk talk about some of the add-ons and the airplanes that were in X Plane Eleven. Will some of those work in X Plane Twelve? And are you do, is is some of the work oh, yeah. that you're describing a They'll part of that? Work. Every so here's our deal. So Ben Sutnick, he's my right hand mm -hmm. man in the coding department, and mm -hmm. he requires, as a matter of, and my God, this guy is dogmatic about policy. He will not change his mind on policy. The policy is everything you do for a version of X-Plane must work at least one version back. So whatever you did in eleven has to work in twelve. Whatever we did in ten had to work in eleven. So as long as Ben with the, Ben has been with the company, you, we have always had everything work back at least one version. So that the answer to your question has already been decided by policy. If it worked in X-Plane 11, it has to work in X-Plane 12. The answer is wow. yes. I love it. I love it. 
I'm annoyed uh, no. by it because it slows me down because I'm not allowed to let the old stuff go to, 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 to deliver the new stuff as quickly as I can. It slows me down and annoys me, but it, there's no question that when Apple pulls this crap on me, where all the stuff I used to do quits working, I want to take my Apple and throw it out the window. So oh, you I totally on the hot button. Auto, you're, listen, Austin, you're hitting, you're actually leading me in perfectly to my questions here, okay? okay? Here's the next question from FSA First Officer Eric. How are Orbix and X-Plane supporting upscale technologies like Apple's Metal FX, AMD's FSR, and NVIDIA DLSS? Now, Austin, I'm going to go to Anna first, if you don't mind. Um, so I think, I mean, uh, for us, it's a learning curve, right? Like with, mm -hmm. with all these things. Um, so we've got... Um, some pretty smart people um, working around there, and we'll. Um, uh, this is the same the same way that we're kind of learning. I've sort of mentioned before we're sort of learning uh, how to do things in Unreal and um, and sort of how all of that. And, and some of the learnings that we actually do in another platform, we actually bring mm -hmm. it in, right? So um, we've learned how to do LODs, for example, which we didn't know before. Um, we learned to do animations. We learned to do special effects. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there, there is always that sort of ongoing um, learning co curve um, that, that we have. And that's why also we need more developers. So if anybody out there is kind of, you know. That academy is gonna come in plenty handy. Yeah, come to us. <laughs> Uh, Austin, same question. How how is Xplain uh, supporting upscale technologies? Okay, so first of all, let me say I'm not the graphics guy. Okay, I'm the flight modeling guy. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, of course we do metal. I mean, everyone in the Xplain community knows we, that we do uh, metal and um, and then and for Windows, so it's metal on Apple, and for Windows, it's Vulcan. Yeah, Vulcan and metal. And but again, that's the purview of the graphics guys. We're always using the latest things. I think. One of the areas of graphics that was kind of the, the high-res graphics that we got into quick was virtual reality. I think we're one of the first sims to have uh, VR headset supported, and we're going to continue. So version 12.0 is not going to have super-duper uh, VR headset support, not really that much better than what you're used mm -hmm. to in X-Men 11. But that is one of the things we got on the short list for 12.1 or whatever is to improve the virtual reality experience. So... Um, yeah, as far as that press goes, we we are uh, looking for speed VR support and meeting the needs of the pro market. I'm not interested in buzzwords and acronyms. I'm much more interested in the what does a technology actually bring to right. the, especially the professional market. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's it's it's a professional market where I'm willing to say okay even if only a certain number of people use this technology it's still worth doing because they're paying a seven hundred and fifty or thousand dollar key right. so um and also also and this is this is a little bit behind the scenes I guess it's okay for me to say this publicly I'm working with a customer that I can't name right now that is going to use X-Men for level D level D is in Delta uh, flight simulators which wow. is the highest level of certification that there yep. is. And we're going to support whatever uh, hardware and technology we need to to meet level D certification, which is the highest level of certification. That so, is amazing. All right, yeah. I don't. I know you can keep going, but we've got a whole host of questions. We're going to keep the fire burning. Okay. Uh, and this is next question is from actually before we get there, I just want to acknowledge uh, that there is a comment from the Butter Club from CD, the community man, one of the community managers of Microsoft Flight Sim says, uh, not a question, but wanted to say a hearty hello to our friends at Orbix and wish Austin. Uh, uh, good luck on the upcoming launch of X-Plane 12. Just wanted to acknowledge the community coming together, right? So hello to CD, uh, and uh, thank you guys for the well wishes over here. Um, uh, yeah, I just love, I love how we're entering a golden age, and this is all just to the benefit of uh, Flight Sim community members. So thank you guys for the love there. All right, this next question is from Greg in Australia. What will be the status of multiplayer function in X-Plane 12? Um, I'm going to say it's initially, at least, largely unchanged in mm. that you can do multiplayer flight. But okay, so now let's, I'm going to talk in more vague terms without mentioning version numbers because I don't mm -hmm. know the version numbers. Sure. But right now in X-Plane Mobile, you can fly on long, online with everyone else. And it is, we are absolutely seeing convergence between desktop and mobile. Okay. The X-Plane desktop mm -hmm. flight model is in the mobile version as well. And gotcha. there are plenty of cases where the technology that we developed in one platform it goes across to the other one. And so the fact that mobile has a massive uh, multiplayer online uh, capability means it's inevitable it's gonna be in desktop as well. I'm not gonna pro promise a version number, but I'm gonna promise that in the long-term future, the only thing that will make me happy as, a, as, as basically the King Joffrey in the, in the Game of Thrones and his Laminar research <laughs> is that 
when you fire up X-Plane, you are connected to a world of X-Planers. It will not matter if they are on desktop. It will not matter if they are on mobile. It will not matter if they're on an iPad, an iPhone, or a wow. simulator. It's irrelevant. The access to the virtual world is completely at the uh, discretion of the user. The fact that a continuous variable, ever surprising, ever changing online world where you are flying with everyone else in real weather with real people acting as air traffic controllers in a world that has a certain reputation associated with it for you as a pilot as well. You're suggesting a class, a, a cross platform X plane where it doesn't matter, where it's device agnostic. Well, it's and, already partially cross platform. I mean, of course. Yeah, it's somewhat cross platform now and that the flight model is, is varying between the two. I want to have more and more convergence as we move forwards. And there will be a point, excuse me, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have had this during the break, right? <laughs> uh, there will be a point where it is completely transparent how you decide to access the X-Plane world. X-Plane itself will, it will be a thin little app that's a portal to the online world where you're flying. That's the long-term vision. So, so give me the short-term vision. What's What can we expect sort of, it, it's the same, right? You talked about similar to yeah. X-Plane. I'm, I'm going to start to go to mobile. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start to play X-Plane mobile. Chris Sirios, a mobile guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start saying, what have you learned from doing your massive multiplayer mobile? What does it do for the customer experience? What does it do for sales? What does it do for server bandwidth? How reliable is it? Can you get me an air traffic controller option there where you can be an air traffic controller? So when you get in mobile, not only are you flying with other pilots, but you can actually talk to them or have someone guide them around. This One, is your short-term view? Or are we still talking long -term? That's, no, that's short -term. That's, that's wow. very short-term. That's very short-term. And then the next, but remember, these are questions. These are right. questions I'm asking. And I've, I'm right. already starting to ask these questions. <laughs> but then the, the next question becomes, okay, now what do we have to roll that into uh, X-Plane Desktop? Gotcha. So that's, I mean, starting to ask the questions and integrate the technology is pretty short term. Now, I, if everybody gets it, I can't guarantee that's quite a short term. I will be, I will definitely be holding you honest to that. All right, All right. we're going to keep the questions firing. This one's from FSA, First Officer Brian. What new features of X-Plane 12 is Orbix planning to take advantage of with their upcoming product? I, I think I'm going, uh, I'm, I've been flicking through the comments here on YouTube and they want to hear from Sante, so... This is going to be a Sante. <laughs> Same question. What new features of X-Plane 12 is Orbix planning on taking advantage of with their upcoming products? Uh, one, one of them that said there's there's a lot. There's a lot to kind of, I mean, it's hard to put my finger on one new feature, but one that I know that people will enjoy is actually, I know that people use ortho, ortho, ortho photo imagery for a lot of their scenery. Um, having the ability to have actual water on top of for ortho scenery is going to be a big one. So that's definitely going to be one that uh, people are going to be enjoying. Um, and in terms of products that allows us as well to, um, you know, better shape uh, water canals and, you know, rivers in some of our airports, even where, you know, the base ortho is there, but we can also, uh, without having to touch the mesh too much, we could, you know, add a little bit more realistic you know, features to some of the airports, and you know, you you see these ditches and um, and stuff like that. So that there's also there's so many different details that I can touch on, but I think that's probably one of the highlight ones that. Well, I, you, I see. you touched on scenery, Santia. This next question from Snaz MC actually touches upon this. Now, a lot of people have been asking this question. This is probably the second most popular question. Will we see an FTX global for X plane like there is for FX X or P3D, or whether there be an improvement to the default scenery? Now, this might be for uh, uh, Austin to answer, but let's let's see. For me? For you. W wait, I'm sorry. I thought this was an Orbix question. I'm sorry, back up. Give me the question again. I <laughs> we will, see an, will we see an FTX global for X-Plane like there is for FSX or P3D? No, I'm not, I'm not sure I can say that right now. So first of all, I don't understand enough about what the product is that you're referring to. I don't, because I don't fly those other sims. If you want to back it up and set it up in a more generic context. So sure, I mean, so, uh, well, you know, we a lot of people use Ortho and X-Plane. And so I'm curious if Orbix or X-Plane has any plans to see an FTX global. So, you know, as you know, Orthos, if, especially when you get down to the smaller millimeter size, right, the files grow exponentially. I'm curious if there is any right. thoughts there. Right, which takes me back to where I think we started this whole interview, which is I need to give worldwide coverage mm -hmm. so people can install quickly, not overflow a, hard, overflow a hard drive, let them go anywhere, let them install it at once. Mm -hmm. And so we're limited in that detail. We're not getting down to the millimeter size ortho photo. 
for just the, the reasons of space and right. download and server and hard drive. It takes away from the ability to give you the entire world right now. So but, were there there it will so there will there be improvements, but like in terms of file sizes? I know that there's gonna oh, be yes. improvements to the scenery, but oh, absolutely. what can you speak to in terms of the file sizing? Okay. Well, all right. So there there's better compression coming out from time to time. I mean mm -hmm. Apple, the they make plenty of mistakes, but my goodness, they can give a compressed image. Uh, they've got like these two bit per pixel file sizes. I don't even know how it's possible to, that they do it. But yes, there's always more compression uh, coming around. that's gonna let us run up the detail. And when you look at the basic scenery files in X-Plane 12, yeah, you'll see they're, they're maybe 20 or 30% better than used to in X-Plane 11, somewhat better. What's really gonna be incredible is all the lighting and the clouds and the trees and, and, and you know the precipitation that all surrounds the world, which is of mm. course the whole flying experience, which is obviously my first priority. But um, we are already starting to think about next generation scenery that will come down farther down the pipeline. But I think the purpose of this interview is more for x 12 and the short to medium term, Correct. Mm -hmm. which is higher detail DSFs, distributed scenery format, uh, scenery files, which is what we use, where we will be bumping up the res. But as far as ortho photo scenery goes, I do not sitting here now feel the desire to provide ortho scenery for X-Men for two reasons. Uh, one, the whole hard drive space thing, it makes mm -hmm. it untenable to, to deliver worldwide and worldwide is what I want to deliver. Mm -hmm. And two, there's absolutely nothing wrong with third parties such as Orbix and others coming along with that ortho photo, which is high detail, but probably won't be done for the steps of Northern Russia, right? It'll be done for Miami. <laughs> so gotcha. um, there is a there is a wonderful place for properly done ortho photo scenery. It is not wide wisely, not wide at the global level. A global level is what I provide. So that that remains just a little bit outside of my targeted delivery for the time being for very good reasons. So I'm gonna quickly toss it to Orbix. Will there will, will you guys create an FTX global or something similar for X Plane 12? You guys care to elaborate mm -hmm. on there before we move forward? Yeah, I'm kind of violently nodding here. Um, we that has been that has been has been our kind of you know staple uh, for a long time. Like I mentioned before, we do have a sort of geospatial you know, team in in uh, in Orbix, and so uh, the answer is yes. Hopefully, yes. Um, depending on what we can do with the platform, but uh, for sure, I mean, we create we've created um, refined meshes. Um, also for Microsoft, for example, where, you know, you do have the whole kind of, you know, world um, pushed in. And so mm -hmm. um, I think we, it is definitely an area of expertise for us. So it is definitely on our radar. I don't know when, but it's definitely on the radar. Yes, but not, not no, no date to attribute to it. <laughs> All right. Dates are always a little bit tricky to commit to. I think a lot of people are asking about a particular date, which, you know, exactly. If it, it's, you know, well, well I'll just about. take the yes, to be honest. I'll take the fact that you are taking a look at it as a major it, win. It just right. to add on to what uh, yeah. Anna was saying, it's, it's also hard to pick dates for something that complex, especially mm -hmm. uh, with what Austin was saying uh, with hard drive space and large coverage areas. We you know we ha do have great experience with True Earth products for X-Plane 11 and you know other platforms. Um, so bringing something that there's kind of like a balance between mm -hmm. that what's mm -hmm. accessible and doable, I think that's still, you know, we're still looking into that, so. Amazing. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm subscribed to the newsletter, so please keep me apprised. Um, let's keep the questions burning. Uh, this one's uh, back over to Austin. This is from First uh, First Officer uh, Frank. Anything new for VR in X-Plane? Uh, yeah, well, as I just said, the VR in X-Plane 12.0 is not going to be that much different from the VR in X-Plane 11. However, in the early 12.05, 12.01, 12.1, whatever it is, yeah, I will be working on VR and professional use. Basically, the delivery that we've got right now, I think, is great for consumer use. Absolutely mm -hmm. great for showing people what it's like to fly an airplane. And we have that right now. We're just in bug fixing mode with scenery right now, which is why I was saying that I think we, we may well be in our public beta this summer. But um, VR and professional use, these are like the ways to, that I really want to dial it in early in the version 12 run. Uh, there's a headset called the Varjo, which has mm -hmm. like higher you know, accuracy in the center of your field of view and lower accuracy at wider. I want to get them supported. Uh, my level D 
uh, visual customers and want to use X-Men for the rendering. They've got all like these visual like checks and dome projection and warping and visual certification things. We want to get that in there. So I'm going to be hitting the professional use early in version 12. And I think you may be able to guess I'm hitting it for two reasons. One, for me, it's it's all about whatever the real airplane does S1 want to do. It's about the yeah. real aviation community, which lends mm -hmm. itself to the certified application. But two, this is exactly what Microsoft is not doing. Right, I'm not mm. going to say, you know, maybe I can copy of Microsoft with Google scenery. No, what does that bring to the community? What does it bring to me? What does it bring to pilots? What does it bring to the community? Nothing. I need to do whatever they're not doing. And so go into the professional uh, grade VR uh, presentation, scenery, flight training. This is what Microsoft isn't doing. And that's where X-Plane is going to provide uh, an incredible benefit to the community. So um, I'm going to be working on, on professional. And the headset is, is one of the answers to that. I'm actually glad that you mentioned hardware. Because uh, this next question from FSA Captain uh, Sessim, uh, are there any hardware requirements for X-Plane 12? Will we all need new PCs? No, you don't all need PCs. <laughs> When I started having uh, the beta testers move from X Plane to 11 to 12, some were like, yeah, the, the scenery looks, you know, everything looks five times better, but it didn't run any slower. And we are just massively, massively dumping load onto the GPU, the graphics card. It used to be with X Plane 11, it was all about the CPU, the central processor unit, and the CPU was all bottlenecked, and the graphics card was basically taking a nap. We've now inverted that. The graphics card is absolutely, I mean, that fan is at full speed. It's all up at 100% processors. And then the CPU is just kind of bouncing the load around between the various cores to keep things balanced as the graphics card is running at wide open throttle. So um, you want a good graphics card. We have not noticed performance deterioration. It renders way, way, way better than it used to. And it's going to really start putting some serious watts to your graphics card that you probably already have. I'm, I mean, I'm loving that you're, you're actually leading me perfectly into these next questions here. This next question from FSA Captain Doc John in DC, will it be easier for us to integrate hardware with X-Plane 12 rather than having to use things like FLUA scripts to make the hardware truly plug and play? I don't know what he's referring to, sorry. And I don't know which, which type of hardware you're referring to. So I'm not ready to answer that question yet. If you want to explain the hardware, I can try and go deeper into that or we can move on. I yep. think, um... Uh, I always need an excuse for a new PC, so I'm okay <laughs> with that. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll come back. I mean, we're talking about things like Thrustmaster and, and uh, off-the-shelf product. Oh, hardware. joystick hardware. So the way x -Men works is anything that's USB hid, you know, mm -hmm. you know USB uh, human interface device plugs into X-Men, you can assign that access to anything you want. And yeah, we've got a, how many joysticks do we have preset, Thompson? Like 20, 30, a dozen, two dozen? 50. More than more, okay. More than my fixer can count. So um, there's all kinds of joysticks you can plug in. X Men will recognize them and give default assignments. But for joysticks that X Men does not recognize, mm -hmm. you can easily assign any access to any function. Now maybe the question mm, is, oh, it's so hard to assign you know axes to functions. I, I think this guy is not asking that question. There's some matters question I'm not understanding because it ain't hard to assign an axis or a button to any function you want, no matter what kind of joystick hardware you got. So I must not be understanding this question because it's very easy. Well, I mean, yeah, sir, so for plug and play, I think this question was more generated for like, you know, those custom home cockpit setups, right? Where they're doing the full at home and they've got custom hardware. Same right. with those. Usually we use scripts, right? To make those to make those work. I see. Yeah. So those so those scripts, they're they're not, I don't see those changing. But mm -hmm. here's kind of an interesting thing about buttons. It is in, in X Plane, it's extremely easy for me to add new commands, right? A button is assigned to what we internally call a command, you know, like lower landing gear, lower flaps. We can we can add more commands and very easily. Or the structure is, is very easy to expand. So if anybody wants to come along and say, hey, I'm building a whole cockpit and now I need a, you know, I need my APU switch to go to APU start, but I don't see a, a way I can wire that up. Mm -hmm, I'll be like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, fine. I'll add a command called APU start. It's not a problem. I'll do it for you. And then I can roll that into the next update. So I can add more commands pretty easily. I can add more data refs pretty easily. So if that's what he's asking, I can add more commands. Now, is that enough to, to make your home built cockpit a snap to build? No, not Depends, necessarily. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay, two more questions for us, and I appreciate you guys surviving the gauntlet. You guys in the audience have been asking amazing questions. We've got two more left for you, and this one's from FSA First Officer Rebecca. Will we see improvement to the default navigation capabilities like the GNS 430 or the GNS 530? Yeah, so Philip Munzel is the guy that does all that. 
and um, he has been working a bit on the 430 and uh, the G1000. Um, but you see, the thing is, I've been using X-Plane 12 for so long now, I can't remember what modifications he made were back in X-Plane 11 and what's in X-Plane 12. Because remember, for me, X-Plane is just one big long continuum with no version numbers. <laughs> so yeah, he has been improving the 430 and the 1000. I don't know if you're going to see a difference between the latest version, you know, 11 and the first version 12. What I want to get is a G3X. That's what I want to get. I want to get a G3X in X-Plane because that's something we have in a lot of rear planes. It's really good. So I'm, I'm kind of begging Philip to do that next. And remember, there's the real SIM gear and the SIM Ionics G1000, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you want accurate G1000, G430, you can get those and they sit physically in front of you on a screen or an iPad or something like that. I've used both the SIM Ionic and uh, the real SIM gear G1000s. They're both great. And so, and that's a better experience than just having something in the cockpit rendered anyway, because you got the physical knobs. When it comes to G1000, and also for that matter, the G430, it's all about what knob do I rotate? What button do I push? Yeah. If you really want to get serious about that, you need some hardware. It can't just be the X-Plane simulation sitting there on the screen. You got to have the buttons and the knobs, because that's level one on Garmin 430 and Garmin 1000. Which of those many buttons do I press? You know, what do I press and when? So I would say look very seriously at the third-party options out there to get the physical hardware stuff because that's always fun to use and it does work. Yeah, but we could still see some improvements to the five, the five thirty, and uh... let, let me not answer for Philip. I don't want to be too <laughs> okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll so, yeah, Philip will make it better. And then Philip's going to be awesome. What are you talking about? I didn't promise that. So you know, I wanted I want to try to avoid speaking for someone else. But yeah, I want them to okay. be accurate. I mean, a G1000 is what my airplane has. So, you know, I like to I like to be like the real plane. Well, Austin, can you do me a favor? We've been sure. watching your X-Plane 12 in the background. Would sure. you mind flying your plane while we ask the last question? I, I now, was kind of hoping you'd show my plane for the whole time. Please, I'm uh, can we, can, I would love for you to fly it while we ask the last question. All right. Everyone, we we've arrived at the last one. So why and, uh, why only it, one question? Are we out of time or what? I mean, we are just about out of time. We're going to ask this last question and then we'll say our goodbyes. It's been, uh, we made it to the end, you know? Hey, okay. listen, well, just because we go offline, Austin, this. doesn't mean the party is going to end. We're all going to go to the after party like we talked about, remember? Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, everyone. It looks like we have a viewership of, hold on, Evan, how many do we have? 35 million? Okay, that's a small crowd. It's, it's kind of a little small. But imagine if 100 million people were listening to us, including mom and dad, Governments, heads of state, everyone is listening. Anna, what message do you have to those folks? Oh, 35 million people. Uh, gosh, it's 100 million um, in this case. You know, 100 million, sorry, yeah. 100 million people. Um, is, um, you know, go out more and with your with your flight simulator and go and kind of explore places, right? So I kind yeah. of like the idea a lot. I like the, I like a lot the idea of the, the visiting the world um through you know something that you like doing and um yeah so just pick it up and go and explore and explore the world santi same question 100 million people are watching okay barack obama's got you on the mobile phone what are you saying <laughs> well just similar to what anna was saying i think it'd be you know it's a perfect opportunity to share the world that we we all occupy right the, the one world that we all call home it's right. uh, it's a beautiful planet so share it with each other hop on a sim show each other around beautiful i love that austin lastly but not leastly you a hundred million people mom dad governments everybody's watching right now what do they what do you got to say to everybody it is a beautiful planet let's not screw it up let's move towards airplanes that don't pollute I've got one in the world, one of those right here, uh, an electric uh, airplane. Uh, it's going to preserve the planet. And a fascinating thing about X-Plane is it, uh, it's a tiny little future prediction. You're looking at here at a little computer algorithm that predicts a little bit of the future. And mm. uh, it's available for anyone that wants to see a little glance at what the future is going to look like. And maybe it's just a future of what their flight is going to look like if they fly a Cirrus SR-22. Maybe it's what their future is going to look like if they fly a Boeing 737 commercially or professionally one day. Or maybe it's a little deeper look into the future. What's the next generation of aircraft that we're going to fly? Um, X-Plane goes to first principles, and because of that, it's designed to tell the future. And uh, you, you're about to have a chance with X-Plane 12 to, to take a little glimpse into what that future might look like. Beautiful and well said, Austin. And I hate to answer my own question, but if 100 people are watching, 
I would say Butter Club, get in there. <laughs> that's my, uh, but that's our time, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'd like to thank our panelists, Anna from Orbix, Santi of Orbix, and X-Plane, and of course, Austin from X-Plane. You guys are amazing. Thank you for speaking with me. Now, it has been an honor being your moderator. My name is Sky Command, aka Sky C. If you want more of me for some reason, you can head over to twitch.tv forward slash Sky Command and give me a follow there. We're also on TikTok. We're on YouTube. Why are we on YouTube? Uh, but seriously, it has been amazing. I would like to thank Evan and the FSA again. And not only will I see you at FS Expo 2023, my company, Plus Up Technologies, is powering the AV and the uh, power for FS Expo. So I'm proud to say that FS Expo 2023 will be powered by my company, Plus Up. So I will see you guys there, OK? Make sure you take a picture. And with that, we are going to go ahead and get out of here. Again, it is truly a pleasure. Have a great evening, good night, and we will see you next time. Evan, over to you. Yes, and thank you. And I'll keep the uh, Austin screen share up as long as I possibly can here. And we'll see when he decides to stop sharing his screen because it's fun to watch. But you can hear my voice even though you can't see me. I am here. I do exist. And I am going to give away some more prizes. So for everyone who's entered the contest at some point today, anyone who has entered the contest over at flightsomassociation.com slash contest, here is your chance, that last chance today, to win 11 more prizes. So here they come. I am starting. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to switch over to show my screen at some point. But uh, let me just remind you before I do that, if I announce that you're the winner, info at flightsomassociation.com is the email you need to reach me at within the next 24 hours. I'll reply back to you with prize information. And remember, if you don't send me an email, if I announce your name, but you don't send me an email, too bad. That prize is going to somebody else. All right, we got four copies of XCPL Pilot coming up. This is a great way to add purpose to your flying in X plane. You can do missions, you can be a medevac pilot, you can do all kinds of great things, build your own use what's available from the community. XCPL Pilot, four winners. First one is Niall Mason. Or Neil Mason, maybe. Sorry if I made that one. If I'm Manson, Neil Mason, whatever. You know what? You know what your name is. Sven W is my next winner. Third one is Cod Cod, and finally Tio Pernas. And I apologize for butchering people's names, but either way, send me an email. We'll get those prizes sent your way. Coming up next from our friends at Airfoil Labs. If you can call a Cessna 172 add-on for flight sim study level. Their Cessna 172NG for X-Plane is probably the one you're going to pick. So winners of the Cessna 172NG and the King Air. And by the way, whichever of you emails me first, you can pick which one you want. So Scenic I and Sherwin underscore A. Whichever of you emails me first, you're going to get your pick at the King Air and the 172. The other one you'll get whatever is left over. And hello to my friends at Airfoil Labs. Thanks so much, guys, for the sponsorship. We we'll look forward to seeing you guys in Houston. Of course, we're giving away some copies of X-Plane because if you don't have X-Plane already, well, now's a good time to get on it. And yes, before you ask, these codes will work for X-Plane 12 as soon as it comes out. Winners of our four X-Plane combo codes, I'm going to say that's D-Badoob or D-Badoob. That's number one. Number two is Corey W. David is our third winner. That one might be a little ambiguous, but if you put your name as David, send me an email and I will make sure that we have the correct person. And Airborne Hedgehog is the last one. So there's four winners of our X-Plane 11 or 12 combo packs. And now, finally, our grand prize for today, the second of our two Thrustmaster TCA Officer Pack Airbus Edition prizes. These are coming to you directly to your house, no charge, show up in the mail an awesome addition to your flight simulation setup and a big thank you to thrustmaster as well as all of the companies sponsoring today's live stream obviously they help make it possible help make it fun for you guys and thrustmaster has been a great partner of ours so our winner of the grand prize is mark bond congratulations to you mark make sure you send me that email within 24 hours to claim that prize the questions today were awesome there were way more questions than we had time for of course so we'll have to get austin and x-plane back again to do more questions but that is all the time that we have for today if you enjoyed today's session and you want more of the same please consider joining us at flight some association we just surpassed 5,000 members which is crazy cool and you can be one of them at flightsomassociation.com slash membership you can also sign up as an fsa captain that includes a free hour with a flight sim coach and a 
real world flight instructor. That includes three free Orbix products and of course perks and savings at our show Flight Sim Expo in Houston. A big thank you to everyone who took part today for the awesome questions from the audience to our panelists and for everyone else watching along at home. Thank you so much for being here with us. That's it from us here at FSA. Good night.